Hi, welcome to Sea Rocks Coastal Creations. Today we're going to make this shattered glass and secret ingredient sea turtle. Now let's dive in. Hey, Sea Rockers. Today's ingredients list is a 10 by 10 wood panel board, fine tip glue gun, some corrugated cardboard, variety of paints, the colors that you want to use, and uh, some iridescence, green glass, not sure what I'll use yet, and art resin. New resin today, gonna try it out. We're gonna work on the background first. I'm taking a beige and a blue, and I'm going to try out this uh, Liquitex iridescent medium and uh, also some white. So I'm going to start with white and put that down first. And then I'm going to take my beige and put that on there as well. And then we're going to blend it a little different way. I'm gonna use my palette knife to blend because I don't want it to become mud. I just want it gently blended. <laughs> so I just make sure I got all the paint across the board before I start adding my blue. After you have that just kind of blended together a little bit, just put a few dollops of blue, or at least that's what I'm doing. You can do whatever you want. And then I'm going to try this Liquitex uh, iridescent medium. <laughs> and I'm stumbling over my words because it didn't work. I had to do it a different way. So, you know, hey, we live and learn, right? Then I'm gonna take my foam brush, just get a little damp, and blend those in to my liking. And if you would, go ahead and smash that like button. It's gonna help both of us out. But seriously, I do appreciate your support and your feedback. Well, our background is dry, and this is where I figured out that the uh, iridescent medium doesn't mix with paint. So I'm putting it right on top and I'm just going to paint that on and then let it dry. And here's what it looks like. See how pretty that shimmer is? Just enough. Our next step is to work on the turtle. I used a reference photo and made a simplified image. Drew that out. Then I cut it up into three different pieces in this case and traced it onto some corrugated cardboard. A corrugated being the operative word here. And then I went ahead and cut those out. Then I went ahead and figured out the placement and decided I wanted my turtle shell to pop a little bit. So I made a smaller, same shape, another shell to go right on top and there'll be a border. Now, this is something so fun to do. It's one of my favorite things. I don't know why it's so satisfying, but I'm peeling the one part of the cord cardboard off of the corrugated stuff. That's why I said it needed to be corrugated cardboard because you don't get that texture any other way. So I just took one of my little pokey tools and uh, peeled off what I wanted. I did leave some to give a little uh, bit of interest to the piece. So once you get it to the point that you're happy, then you're done. Okay, not really done, but you know, you're done with that part. <laughs> anyway, I hope you have fun with this part too. Now, because I knew I was going to be using some resin, I didn't want the resin to affect the cardboard. So I went ahead and I used the Kamar varnish by Krylon and I gave 
two or three really good coats on both sides of all the cardboard pieces. So everything was cut out and now I'm just ready to glue everything down. I'm using uh, my E6000 uh, glue and just glue that into place and let it dry. On this particular piece, I decided to add some detail with hot glue. So I have this uh, fine tip detailed glue gun and I'm just gonna go around the shell and just build that up as far as I want it, as far as you want it. Um, I did go over it a couple times, but I'm not gonna bore you with that because it is kind of tedious. And uh, anyway, so yeah, I'll let you see. And then I went ahead and decided to outline the whole piece in addition to. Once the hot glue is dry, I'm going to use this Posca marker in gold and just outline the glue on the shell. So I'll just go all the way around and it's uh, irregular, just do the best you can. I accidentally got some on the cardboard, so then I had to add some more spots on the cardboard <laughs> to make it look like it was intentional. But shh, don't tell anybody that. <laughs> Now, as I do so many times, I decided to add a detail I didn't plan on, and so I used another size, a, a fine tip Posca marker in gold, and I just put a little bit on the outline around the uh, actual turtle, just on top, just right next to the cardboard. Again, you can do whatever you want. This is just what I did with this piece. Next was to add some background color to the um, fins and the head. And I used those two greens, an iridescent green and a non-iridescent green. And I'm just gonna layer them on here. First, I'm going in with the uh, darker green and then I'll highlight on top of that with the iridescent green. The idea being is because whether I'm gonna use beads or glass, I don't want the cardboard, the brown cardboard glaring through. Even though I want the brown, I just don't want any spots that get missed or get seen to be obvious. So I guess this is intentional, green and brown cardboard. <laughs> so I was thinking, I think our green guy needs a name. Drop in the comments what you think I should name this little guy. He's so cute, don't you think?
after that paint was dry, I decided I'm gonna use some stained glass that I have on hand and I'm going to smash it. Now, for whatever reason, my camera didn't like my smashing this time and it kept vibrating. So it's pretty useless and you'll see, and I won't subject you to this torture. But anyway, so take my word for it. I smashed up the glass and got it into little bitty pieces. <laughs> Again, do whatever makes you happy, but this is what I'm gonna put on the head and the fins. <laughs> now, I got a little excited and I forgot to turn on the camera. <laughs> so I put down an eye and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. It, it's a, it's actually a round bead cut in half. So it's kind of like a sleepy droopy eye. And then I took the, um, the little teeny tiny shards and glued them around the eyeball just for some different texture. So this is just an example of one of the beads, how I cut it in half. And the one I put down just happened to have some black in it. I end up using the green later. But here's a much better video of uh, the eyeball. So the glue I'm gonna use for this is by Judy Kins. It's called Diamond Glaze. Uh, it's designed for like beading and things like that. I use it um, with some of the glass when it's like this because you can put it underneath, you can put it on top and it's very secure. And again, it's like a glaze and it's water-based so it cleans up real easily. I love it. So then the pieces we're gonna use for the uh, rest of the body here, the, the green painted parts, is just some larger pieces than what's around the eyeball. And how I use the glue is I just put it down. It's very watery, so you don't need a lot. Just make sure it's whatever you put in it is sitting in it and it will secure it. And um, then I just put some glue over the top if I needed to. I ended up just laying everything flat. It just seemed to be easier and safer too because the glass is sharp. And uh, I did have to sand down some sharp spots. So just lay your glass flat if you do it like this. Or you could use beads and you wouldn't have that issue at all and it would still look awesome. finding value in today's project, I'd appreciate it if you could splash that like button. After I got the pretty green glass on there, I decided I was going to add some green to the background to make it a little more cohesive. So I just took this little fan brush. You can use any kind of brush you want. And I just put a little bit of paint on my brush and kind of dabbed it out and just gave just some random mm, swipes and you'll see. In the end, it, it turns out real, real nice. It, it worked out well and I'm glad I did it. Now we're ready to decorate the shell. And I found these shell beads that had kind of a kind of a cream and a taupey brown in them. And so I'm just gonna lay them out, uh, figure out my design, and then I'll glue them down.
Now it's time to glue. I'm gonna use my E6000 glue again because I really want them to stay. I don't want them to uh, come off. And instead of putting the glue directly on the bead, uh, because that will tend to make a big glob and then it'll dry glossy and I don't want globby gloss on my matte corrugated cardboard. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my bead, dip it into the glue on the other side and just make sure there aren't any of those little stringy things going on and then place it and not move it. Just push it down, but don't move it around. Otherwise then the glue will get everywhere. Now it's time to prep for our resin. We got our little stands, my sides are taped, and I'm gonna level it out. Now I have my resin mixed up, I'm gonna leave it clear. I'm using the brand Art Resin today, and it is very easy to use, one-to-one -one ratio, and I'm just gonna pour it onto that background. Not gonna get anything onto the turtle, I'm gonna move it right up to the edge and out to the edge. Once your resin is spread out, then go ahead and use your torch and get all those bubbles out and then we're ready for the next step. I decided I wanted to add just this little something extra to the background. So I'm gonna take some of the glass, not the big chunks, but like the little glassy dust, and I am going to sprinkle it onto the background and it'll just add a little extra. And once you're happy with that, it's time to put it to bed. Good morning, sunshine. Let's get you finished up. Now it's time to take off the tape and paint the sides. I decided to go with a combination of a couple greens, just pulling that green all the way through. And I'm really glad I did because I think it turned out perfect. Well, there he is. Sides are painted and the back has its hanger on it. Now let's take him outside and see how pretty he looks. Oh, there he is in all his glory and texture and sparkle. Hey, don't forget to uh, tell me what you think we ought to name him. Just go ahead and drop it right in the comments. He needs a name, don't you think? And thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed yourself and maybe you're inspired to try something new. I invite you to join the Sea Rocker family. And like, share, and subscribe with your salty friends because it helps me create more content for you. And don't forget to follow me on my other social media platforms. Thanks for watching. Until next time, go beach or go home. Yeah.